Pastor Greg Locke is a digital evangelical Christian individual who creates online content, straw manning, generalizing, and generally being ignorant about people that he disagrees with. And he's built an audience doing this. His latest video, one of his later videos anyway, is aimed at non-believers and atheists. And instead of showing you the whole thing and going through a point-by-point -point rebuttal of what he says, I am not going to waste your time. I'm going to show you one specific clip, and I'm going to talk about that clip in depth. And it's talking about his social media plan. And the fact of the matter is, it works. And I'm sure you'll realize this once you hear it yourself. I just want to thank all of my atheist friends out there because every time you comment nonsense and hatred on my page, you're just sticking me into the feed of a whole lot of friends that get to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So at the end of the day, God's going to get his glory with or without you. The fact that Pastor Greg just admitted that he doesn't care about the truth of his statements and that he doesn't care about any of his criticisms should in and of itself stop people from responding to what he's saying. And it should also stop people from sharing what he's saying. Because he doesn't care about what listeners say. He only cares about the size of the crowd that he's drawing. And that's really important. And it should be really important to believers as well as non-believers. But it's not. Because people from both sides have shared this content. They've talked about it. They've responded to it. So it's clear that we might as well do so as well. And that we might as well do so a little bit more critically and a little bit more intelligently. Because it's obvious that he doesn't care about lengthy corrections to his statements, and he doesn't care about the facts behind the claims that he's made, whether those facts are for or against what he's saying. He's only making bold assertions because he knows the bold assertions that he's making up are going to draw reactions from people. And at the end of the day, what he wants is those reactions, because those reactions and the feelings that his statements provoke will cause people to share his content, which will in turn get him more views, it'll get him a bigger audience, and it'll eventually work out in his favor so that he gets other benefits from creating content online, including notoriety and renown in evangelical circles. So if we really want to stop him, the key is to not give him what he wants. But writing out lengthy responses where at the end and in the middle you link directly back to his website, you link to his profiles, all of that is giving him what he wants. And I know that's frustrating to hear, but we're not talking to someone who cares about whether he's right or wrong. We're talking to someone who's playing social media like a game just because he wants a bigger megaphone to speak out of. And we need to realize that. I realized that in the process of writing a video script that was a full-length response to what he said point by point, and even in the process of filming it. But then I started listening to that last part of the video. I started listening to it a lot, and it made me realize that he doesn't care, and that many of his followers who watch his videos all the way through also probably don't care. They don't care about how correct he is. They see him growing on social media, and eventually they're going to want to emulate his success. So we need to stop his success right now. We need to stop giving him the kind of attention that he's been getting, and we need to start dealing with him more intelligently. And we can. I know that we can, because I'm doing it. And the way that I'm doing it is that I am responding to parts of his videos without linking back directly to him. So my video won't link people to his content. People can look up his name from when I said it earlier. People can find him that way. That's fine. But I am not giving his videos any more views than the one I did when I first started getting the video so that I could respond to it. And that's ultimately the thing that we as non-believers need to do. We need to think more carefully and more critically about how we respond to him, on what platforms we use, and what links we use when we're talking about him. If this video has gotten you thinking more carefully about how to react to people like Greg Locke, Joshua Fierstein, Ray Comfort, and other evangelical apologists, then that's good. That's the purpose of it. And I'm hoping that we can start a conversation about that. I'm hoping that we can come together as a community because of that, and we can work out ways to more intelligently respond to these kinds of people than giving them what they want, which isn't often conversions, but rather attention.